uh, for me it's a uh, kind of uh, uh, coming to the full circle. Uh, the first time I attended this meetup was back in uh, uh, 2015. Uh, so Vatsal and I, we attended this and uh, now yeah, at that time I thought yeah, maybe someday I'll, we'll definitely try to present something, what all we are doing. So yeah, today is the day. Uh, okay, um, uh, so this is uh, more or less the same uh, slide which I just presented earlier in the day. So those of you who have already seen it, please bear with me. Okay, uh, so how do you build the foundations of AI you need? Um, of course, I'm going to rely uh, more on the experience of how we built it at Inoplexus. Um, foundations, I, I think pretty much uh, all of you would relate with it. So data, ontology, computing power, algorithms. Uh, Yes, uh, big talk, so yeah, AI eats data for breakfast. <laughs> and uh, this is something which, yeah, we had a realization uh, somewhere in 2013 that uh, if at all uh, we, we have to do something in AI, it's going to be driven by data. We could see uh, what all uh, was happening in the world um, and uh, we could relate to it that, yeah, uh, we didn't have a clear use case of getting all that data, but still we decided let's get everything first, we'll figure it out. Uh, of course, uh, the uh, inspiration has been ImageNet. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you would already know about it. Uh, the impact that it had uh, on uh, the field uh, of AI, deep learning overall, it's, it's immense. This is the first time which actually prompted of why you should focus on data rather than simply on models. Um, so uh, we started uh, the traditional route so looking at uh, enterprise data and uh, yeah, we could see that yeah, this, uh, there wasn't much of a challenge, the data was there, we could work it out and uh, that's where we started uh, looking at okay, what's not there and we realized that at least in life sciences, there's a lot of data that was out there which uh, enterprises didn't know about, uh, be it web pages, PDF files, scientific publications, um, a lot of open data sets, etc. We started getting all of that, yeah, public data, um, and of course, uh, yeah, this is where we landed. So, uh, as of now, uh, more than 300 terabytes of data, uh, all, everything, you name it. Uh, if there is anything that's uh, publicly available and it's related to life sciences, uh, we already have it, or probably we'll have it by tomorrow. So, that's uh, how it is, uh, millions of publications, uh, abstracts, uh, web pages, hospital web pages, pharmaceutical websites, everything. Um, yeah, uh, so this is just to demonstrate that uh, the dealing with structured data probably is a lot easier than uh, dealing with the uh, unstructured public data. And uh, that's where again, uh, uh, when we started, we were quite naive to believe, yeah, okay, fine, how difficult would it be? So we started. And uh, that's where uh, we needed to build a lot of things and that ultimately became our USP and uh, uh, the work that we did, uh, that's what I'll be uh, covering for the next few slides. So yeah, okay. Um, uh, this was the first uh, stumbling block, let's say we crawled all the data, we got all the data, but uh, 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 we thought okay, wh what to do with that data because uh, neither of us you know, in the founding team or even the early employees, we didn't have any background in life sciences. So we hired a couple of guys who had uh, uh, PhDs in uh, different fields uh, and uh, those who can, uh, who we could say that yeah, these are the life science experts. Very soon we realized that yeah, it's not something which can be done manually at all. And uh, we looked at uh, the other examples of what other people are doing and that's where we realized there are, uh, so uh, there were very large companies who were doing it manually, uh, hiring thousands of analysts who were uh, curating this data manually and that's where again we realized, okay, either we should close down or we should figure out something about it. And that's where again we said, okay, how difficult would be again, uh, the magic word seemed to be ontology, which is uh, the grammar of uh, the domain. So if, if you look at it, this is what contains all the, uh, in, in life sciences context again, uh, it will have all the concepts, the relationships, 
Um, the synonyms of all these concepts, the different terms and so on. For example, cancer uh, can be called as carcinoma um, or you can uh, say somebody can use a word tumor that also is related to cancer only. Yeah. So, all of these and, and so on, you know, there are uh, so many examples and that is what we learned that we need to first build the ontology. Uh, so, this is uh, what we ended up with now. Uh, what we have is uh, the world's uh, most comprehensive largest ontology in life sciences with more than 20 million terms. Um, we still uh, we uh, in conferences we hear, hear people those who have ontologies of few thousand terms. So, yeah this is order of magnitude uh, bigger than uh, anything that is available currently. Uh, this is again example of uh, the difference that ontology makes. So, I would not take the name, but this is one of the most uh, famous examples in the world this is one of the world's most renowned institute in the world which runs this online portal. I go there myself at least twice a day, it is really good, but uh, this search. So, if uh, I know that they have a lot of articles on artificial intelligence, but if I search I get these which I mean just from the title you can say these are, this is junk. Why this is coming here because this article has the word artificial somewhere this article has probably the word intelligence somewhere and that is why it is artificial intelligence. And this again it does not know that AI is a synonym of artificial intelligence and gives me the same results which is here because the name the author's name has the word AI. So, on this if you search for AI uh, first 3 4 pages at least will contain the results only from this author why because the author name has AI in it. So, that is that is what that is what happens if you rely simply on the words or keywords without really if your system does not understand the concept and purely relies on the keyword or the words. This is another example a uh, very famous one was covered in media. So, <coughs> there was a, a, a case study that uh, uh, so, Anne Hathaway she is a very famous actor and uh, uh, the gentleman I think you may recognize Warren Buffet Hathaway yeah. The relationship that is what happened that uh, whenever there was a movie or there was a positive review around Anne Hathaway uh, there was a significant uh, jump in the trading and uh, numbers around Hathaway. And that is what you know ultimately uh, a guy discovered that it was simply because their models could not differentiate between Anne Hathaway the actress and the Hathaway the company this was entity disambiguation you know this is a very very standard and a very big problem in any domain the moment you talk about language processing yeah you will because if you rely on words yeah you, you will have a, a tough time because your models your systems would not understand what really it means you know in what context it could be the same word would mean different things in different context. Uh, now, we have our ontology um, uh, available to uh, our clients and uh, so you can use uh, anybody who has access to uh, onto site this is the online system. So, we have released our ontology wherein people can uh, play with it. So, you can uh, look at a concept the relationships and you can uh, dive deep and, and you can see how the life science domain itself maps out. So, what the genes connected to or uh, the drugs which are connected to other targets and so on. Yeah, uh, this again just uh, last week uh, there was a supercomputer called summit released by uh, IBM and Oak Ridge <coughs> national labs. The significance is uh, Nvidia GPUs. Yeah, so, now it is the age of really uh, GPU computing anything. So, this is the first computer supercomputer which is uh, made for AI and, and really is, is made for uh, you know co completely all the tasks that we are talking about for deep learning and, and everything. And this has been possible all of it you know is just last uh, decade you know if, if uh, somebody would have said that uh, probably in 2006 or 2007 that one day we will have a supercomputer powered by Nvidia I and mean, people would have laughed. So, this is the order of magnitude of difference that we, we see you know using GPUs versus uh, any CPU. This again uh, yeah this so order of magnitude you know if you look at this this is how it is you know, if your team 
are stuck, uh, if, your, if your teams are stuck uh, training their models on, on CPUs, they'll probably really have a, have a tough time like this guy. And uh, yeah, so this is why the computing infrastructure is really important. Uh, yeah, this is just uh, take a look why we use cloud. So of course, uh, I'm sure a lot of people would know the benefits. So yeah, for us, it's been really that as a startup, it could take uh, the giants head on because we didn't have to invest significantly in the infrastructure. We could rely on cloud and uh, do things like this. So uh, just for a fraction, so for $400, we could do get all of this, 20 terabytes of RAM. Uh, we could process 130 million news articles. Processing is, so classifying in different categories, uh, picking out the entities, uh, identification, disambiguation, everything. And all of it just uh, even in this, uh, yeah, just, just about six hours, it's, it's again, it's, uh, a lot of time is, is where the, some manual interference was required. Otherwise, it's even lesser time. Uh, Final bit is on the algorithms. So uh, how we did it, so we got the data. So even uh, getting the data phase, there is a lot of AI that we needed because in getting the data and crawling itself, now we have systems which uh, figure out what to crawl and what to not. You know, we have, uh, so uh, we have scanned almost the entire web, more than 300 million top level domains. Uh, and uh, out of that, our systems now know uh, which website they should crawl, let's say, uh, visit uh, every hour or uh, every 24 hours or maybe never at all, you know, that's, that's pure junk. So it, at the crawling stage and then at uh, extraction, uh, the information extraction, that's where again we have used a combination of different techniques to extract the information, so uh, convolutional neural network, LSTM, to uh, extract specific blocks of information or uh, to uh, uh, extract entities to figure out whether its entity is, uh, let's say, whether it's a gene or, or it's, a, it's a drug or whether if it is an acronym, which of the full forms of that acronym would it correspond to, yeah. And uh, so these are the algorithms on the side. So uh, I'm sure again, uh, those who have been regular in this group would relate with it. This is uh, just four classes broadly. Uh, a lot of the progress you'll already see uh, if you have been following uh, machine learning and this. The supervised system is where we see uh, a lot of the progress. All of it uh, that you see has been the result of supervised systems, supervised learning system wherein there is a human in loop system. So you uh, start with uh, uh, labeling the data. Yeah, you, uh, so humans label the data, for example, yeah, here in, in this, so if you have examples of these images, somebody, uh, humans will start adding that, yeah, this is an image with text, this is an image without the text and so on. And then you have uh, models which will uh, continue working on it and then they will, uh, if you give new uh, data, new information to it, it, all, uh, it will start predicting whether it is uh, it is, whether it has text or not and so on. Again, you can replace text with cats and dogs or whatever, but the crux of the matter is uh, it's human in the loop, yeah. Uh, unsupervised, the other way, it's, it's completely wherein uh, uh, there is no human in loop. So uh, you just give, a, uh, give the data and you expect the, uh, the function itself to figure out what is there, you know, what are the possible patterns, for example, clustering, wherein you don't have uh, uh, any information and you are looking to discover what are the possible clusters from that data that's possible, yeah. Um, Semi-supervised is, is a mixed and this is where again uh, there is a lot of uh, action nowadays wherein uh, it's a, a combination given the investment required in supervised systems. Yeah, because you need humans in loop, you need people to manually label that data and that process uh, can be very expensive and again very time consuming. So you may uh, take an approach wherein you uh, create a small training data set and then uh, try that, uh, run that uh, over the data and then 
based on based on that you keep uh, refining it so you uh, you don't uh, need to have a large training uh, training data set you can afford to start small and then uh, use the feedback loop to uh, proceed further reinforcement uh, learning again uh, here in in the entire process simply the uh, uh, what a changes is, is is there is a reward yeah. so anything uh, whatever the action is let's say if the classification is correct the uh, uh, the agent the model it it receives a reward so what it does is over a period of time it will always try to optimize that path it's it's it's, it's simply like you know if uh, you are rewarding a, a kid for the good behavior you know in the same way and uh, the best examples for that is uh, is already out is uh, the autonomous cars which are that's that's the best example for uh, using reinforcement learning mm, this is again uh, the table representing the input output and uh, here this is where you can relate that almost all of the uh, applications that uh, you would have read about um, in last couple of years which uh, were people are saying this is a success for machine learning deep learning ai whatever all of it more or less gets covered here whether it's speech recognition training bots image tagging pharma r and d fraud detection so all of it simply is nothing but you know giving an input getting this this output so input output pairs these are this is what more or less sums up the uh, supervised learning systems this is what we have been doing so uh, we started uh, here here and then uh, slowly expanding these are uh, speech and expert system this is where we have uh, some pocs running but most of the work is still in in, in these three blocks uh, started uh, we what we started as a natural language processing now we call it uh, life science language processing now because uh, based on our experience uh, the natural word itself is a misnomer uh, given that uh, uh, the natural language let's say could be english and you could be very proficient in in the language uh, in english but still you will have a tough time figuring out uh, or understanding the content from scientific publications yeah it's not because uh, you are not able to read it you are very much able to read the content since it's in english but still you won't be able to understand what it says yeah so that's where uh, ontology is i said uh, that that's where it makes a difference and uh, what we uh, call it as a life science language processing because it, it's way beyond what uh, the people have tried in nlp and in last uh, at least two decades there has been a lot of work but unfortunately all of that work we have seen uh, it, it's it didn't give results as expected especially in in domains like life sciences because uh, the underlying uh, one the underlying data on which they were trained was again uh, flawed and so many of the people uh, tried so they trained it on news data and they expected it to work it for life sciences publication which was naturally a wrong approach uh, or or uh, even uh, a lot of people uh, uh, just went ahead with uh, the uh, algorithms without realizing that here uh, are, we are dealing with concepts which are a lot complex than what we will encounter in uh, uh, in regular articles maybe with news articles and so on the life science uh, language itself is is very complex for example one sentence here uh, could be uh, simply a result of uh, maybe 25 years of research yeah you will have references going back 25 years so there is a lot of work that <coughs> that gets condensed into just one one uh, sentence so what we are doing is uh, right, right, clustering classification entity identification extraction document comparison topic modeling uh, relation extraction and uh, a bit of the vision part so i'll give you an example so for example here so this is uh, uh, one of the pages that uh, our crawlers hit we have this page now in this page what we need is this information yeah in a structured form now this page this is again not the complete web page this is still as a header and 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 sidebars and and a footer but uh, so first task our uh, system already understands that uh, what is interesting in this page 
is not the uh, not the uh, header or the sidebar or the footer they already knows that that is something which is is, is not uh, useful uh, this is the interesting part and in this interesting part is already able to uh, get the different blocks yeah and uh, and further within the blocks it's able to annotate and get the information and uh, it's able to create that yeah uh, again whether if the instead of designation maybe it's it's written affiliation or if there is even there if there is no label it's still able to understand what information is really required because again uh, people could uh, and you can imagine on web pages these could have all different kinds of formats uh, structures and so on but uh, that's what over a period of time our systems now understand and in this case uh, we are already uh, we have achieved close to uh, uh, 95 96 percent of uh, precision uh, again that this is more or less i have summarized uh, this is what all we are doing different models and so on okay yeah so uh, the summary is ai is just another tool uh, use it as you would use maybe you know uh, your laptop or, or your camera it's no different it's only as good as like how you are you are planning to use it based on what data you have and what is the right form what's the foundation that you are going to prepare for it thank you